the Washington Wizards might be generationally bad this season. I know that's crazy. My whole brand, my whole brand of Enjoy Basketball is looking at the NBA from a positive perspective, but you got to call a spade a spade, and the Wizards are bad. Like, really, really bad. Now, they play four preseason games, and, and I'm diving into preseason just because I love the game of basketball. They're, it really doesn't hold a ton of weight, right? But they play four preseason games. They won one game against Toronto Raptors, tip my hat to that. But of the other three games they played, they lost all three by an average of 29 and a half points. You know how hard it is to lose by that many points, even in a preseason game? They've done it three different times. Now, today, nothing was going on, right? Um, there, there was a basketball game starting up, and I was thinking to myself, Monday Night Football don't start for another hour. This baseball game is a blowout. So let me sit down and watch the potential tank fest of the Brooklyn Nets and the Washington Wizards. Why did I do that? I guess I'm just thirsty for the NBA season to start. It was cool to see Ben Simmons be aggressive and be kind of interesting. But other than that... This was a tough, tough watch for the Wizards. And I actually watched their first preseason game against the Toronto Raptors at least the first three minutes before I cut it off because they couldn't get a goddamn shot up. It's bad. It's bad. You know what's funny? I think they're going in the right direction. Here I am playing the, the uh, enjoy basketball side of it. Since, uh, what was his name? Tony, uh, Tony Shepard um, has been dismissed from his, his position as the general manager. I've been thinking that they've been doing a pretty damn good job for setting themselves up for the future. It ain't been perfect. But it's been pretty cool taking some shots and getting multiple first round picks in this year's draft, getting Alex R, Bub Carrington, and Keon, uh, Keyshawn George. Pretty interesting group of rookie players. I think they did a pretty good job bringing in Jonas Valanciunas on a uh, team friendly deal, which means that I think he's probably going to get traded somewhere throughout that contract. Even one of the more underrated slash NBA nerdy things that happened this offseason was them signing Sadiq Bey to a team friendly deal. And Sadiq Bey may not play this entire season, but they got that in the back pocket as a trade piece because Sadiq Bey is at least a decent. NBA player and some team might be interested in him when he becomes healthy and they're trying to make a playoff push. Like they've done some pretty solid stuff since the new guys come in. I don't even know new guys' names just yet. I'm sorry. Since the new guys come in about a, a year ago, I forget exactly when. So they've done some decent stuff in the front office, but that encore product is really, really bad. Um, I saw uh, I saw uh, an interview from the new guy. What is his name? Will Dawkins. And Will Dawkins was asked about the wins and losses from last season. And he, and he wasn't asked about, like, literally wins and losses because, boy, was it a lot of losses. Uh, 60, 67 to be exact. Um, 67 to be, that's crazy. Uh, and he was saying that in the second half of the season, we were a better team than in the first half. And I was like, how, how true is that? I mean, personally, I wasn't really tuned in to many Wizards games after, what, the first three weeks of the season because the writing was on the wall. I watched some highlights. I watched this and that. But as far as tuning in to a full Wizards game, it's been a minute, y'all. It's definitely been a minute. So they were 7-36 and 36 under Wes Unsell. Not very good. But then they were 8-31 and 31 under uh, Brian Keefe. Six, six, that's true. They were better in the second half of the season. Um, the Wizards winning 15 games is kind of crazy because... If a team wins 15 games under most circumstances, it's like one of the major talking points in basketball. Oh my God, this team is so, so damn bad. But because there was another team that somehow won less than 15 games, nobody cared that the Washington Wizards went on multiple double-digit game loser streaks throughout the season. Nobody cares. It was just something. The only time the Washington Wizards were talked about was when Jordan Poole was doing something crazy like dribbling off his own face. That was the only time the Washington Wizards got any airtime. And it's kind of a blessing in a way. <laughs> like, you can, if you're going to be real, real bad, you want to be real, real bad in silence. And they, they got 15 total wins with decent to adequate point guard play, right? I think we can agree Tyus Jones is a good point guard, and we talked about that when we talked about the Suns. He's a de at least decent point guard. He's gone, and they're really giving the, the ball to Jordan Poole and say, hey, you're our point guard for this season. And I'm just really, really scared about that. I'm hoping that Jordan Poole has a bounce-back season. I'm not putting any stock into any way. But Tyus Jones was really like a, a game managing point guard, and that is no longer on the roster. It's really going to be Jordan Poole and basically a, a lot of young guys. Like Malcolm Brogdon is on the roster, but he's already injured. I don't know exactly what their plan is with Mr. Brogdon, if, if he's going to start alongside Jordan Poole when he gets healthy or what. Because in my mind, even with Malcolm Brogdon being healthy, you, you've invested in Jordan Poole. He's probably going to be your starter. But Lau Koulibaly, of course, has to be a starter there. Um, uh, Kyle Kuzma has to be a starter. 
Alex Saar has to be a starter. And I guess Valanciunas. I mean, I guess there's a world where Alex Saar goes down to play the five, but I think he's not ready for playing full-time five. So even when Malcolm Brogdon comes back, he's probably going to be a backup unless they just go completely in on trying to get his value at an all-time high. And the way you do that is by starting him. And Malcolm Brogdon is at least a decent NBA player, even though he's been on 100 teams in six years. Uh, but I, I don't really know what their, their goal is with that necessarily. But like, you can argue that Denny Abdia was like, their most impactful player when it comes to winning basketball games. And he's out the door for a shot at Bub Carrington. So what, whatever, I, I guess I'm okay with that, depending on what Bub Carrington turns into. And you had Denny Abdia on the roster and you still won 15 games. Like, I'm not trying to act like Denny Abdia is like LeBron James or anything, but he's the type of player, at least in my mind, with his skill set, he should help translate some losses to win some of those close battles. And he is no longer on the roster. And I just know every Washington Wizards fans is going to be just really into the mock drafts for this whole season really into watching duke basketball baby because they're really here to play them lottery odds and um them being generationally bad really just gives them a 14 percent chance hell the team that was worse than them last season fell down to fifth so there's no real guarantee that being this bad is going to guarantee you a cooper flag on one of the top guys in, in the class but regardless this is the route that they've decided to go on like, I'm trying to remember, was it the, which regime was it that did the Bradley Beal trade? I'm pretty sure that was this regime, which if it was them, re retire their, um, their polos right now. Retire their polos right now. To get off the Bradley Beal contract is crazy to me because I don't think there's another GM across basketball that a Bradley Beal was available right now and they pick up the phone and say we want him. They got out of that deal. They got out of that deal. That's crazy. And in real time, I was like, oh, that's, na that's a nasty trade package to get rid of Bradley, Bradley Beal. <laughs> I changed my mind, brother. You, you did it right. I mean, there are some things to be excited about. Like, it ain't going to be all gloom, even if you do lose every single game. Because Bilal Koulibaly gets another year of progressing. Um, and he's one of those dudes I got a lot of stake in. I don't know what player he's going to turn into. I'm not the Wasser Wizard fan. I think he is the next Giannis. Um, but I do believe that he's got a bright future in the NBA. Alex Saar, for better or for worse, is going to have a lot of opportunity for him to see who he is as an NBA player and continue to grow as a hooper. And that's kind of it. Um, I decided a few weeks back that I was going to make a video about all 30 NBA teams. And this is one of those teams. I'm like, I don't know how much I really have to say when you're that bad. It's not many things you can say and still keep it. Okay. You feel me? Is there a world where they win less than 15 games this season? Is that realistic to think about? Um, I don't really know. I guess you can let me know in the comment section. Wizards fans, I'm sorry, but it might be all worth it once we get to the NBA draft lottery.